Welcome to the Break Vape Podcast. I am your host, Tammy Ernst. If you are an overwhelmed mom struggling to quit vaping after trying everything in your power to quit, then you are in the right place, mama. Each week on the show, we analyze stress, vaping, and addiction from a place of zero self-judgment so that you can build up the skills you need to ditch your vapes for good. Are you ready? Let's get to work. Hi, mamas. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you? I hope you guys are all doing amazing. Today, we are diving into part four of my four-part series on self-awareness, curiosity, disciplined goals, and empowerment so that you can have a rock-solid foundation to start crushing your quit vaping goals as soon as you want to. If you are stuck in that old, horrible, repetitive cycle of trying to quit vaping and then failing and then beating yourself up because you failed and then vaping again and then that cycle just keeps running on rinse and repeat in your life, I know exactly how you feel and that is how I know that this episode is for you along with the three before it that all tie into this four-part series. This series is so unique and strategic in the way that it applies to vaping. It is everything that I wish I would have known at first when I was failing miserably in my own quitting journey, but I didn't have a coach to teach me how to quit vaping exactly. I had to create things that worked for me, and I'm actually so grateful for those experiences now because I can teach you how to quit vaping for good without white-knuckling it like I did for so long. I experienced towards the end of my journey a lot of not white knuckling it after I figured out how to do that. But the beginning was hard and so long that eventually it was hard to tell when I had even decided to quit because I had picked back up again and again for years. But there is a better way and I'm so glad that you are here today because I'm going to show you how to get started. The answer to your questions around why you can't seem to really quit vaping are going to be answered for you throughout this series. Your vape-free future starts with self-awareness, which leads to curiosity. Curiosity leads to disciplined goals. Disciplined goals lead to self-empowerment. And self-empowerment, which we are going to dive into in a minute, will set you up to absolutely crush your quit vaping goals because you will be approaching them from a place of control and confidence instead of fear and desperation. This shift is exactly what you have been missing. When you get to the end of this episode, I want you to go back and listen to the last three episodes where I broke down self-awareness, curiosity, and discipline goals for you. And I want you to do the homework that I prompted you to do if you haven't done it yet, okay? Like I said earlier, no one can do this work for you and it won't just magically appear as done in your life just by listening to the podcast. If you really want to quit vaping, make sure that you do the work. After you do all of the work from the last three episodes, you will have a solid understanding that vapes are bad for you. You will have done the self-awareness exercises to understand how to question your brain as to why you are choosing to slowly hurt yourself instead of feeling present. And you will know how to do value excavation to see what your core values are so that you can embody them intentionally. From the curiosity prompts, you'll know your why, aka your number one reason for vaping, You'll know where you are planning to get your curiosity journal. You'll know what your biggest trigger will be. You'll know how many minutes per day you're going to spend on anti-vaping research. And you'll know your number one excuse for not quitting. Then when you add in the work you did on discipline goals, you will know all of the sub-goals that you need to meet, which all umbrella under the larger goal of quitting vaping. And by the end of today's episode, you will understand how crucial empowerment and action are to start living the life that you want. From here, you will be able to go on to successfully create your quit plan and your relapse plan because you will have the skills you need for high-level mental preparation built upon a rock-solid foundation of understanding your own mind and how you can use it to help you quit. Now, for today's purposes, we are going to give empowerment two topics, okay? First, we have how to feel empowered, and then we have how to take empowered action. I was thinking of how to explain this to you guys earlier today when I was out on a hike. I just moved to Arizona, and there are mountains and hiking trails conveniently located everywhere. So this morning, I bike over and back to a mountain that I have been working on summiting for a few weeks. 
you know, I only have this one life and this one body to carry me through it. So I try to stay as healthy as I can. But you guys, I am from Houston, Texas, where it is flat, hot, and humid. So I am not a hiker. I have never been a hiker. It is a lot harder than it looks. And it is something that I am working on. So I've been trying out this new trail. Well, new to me. Now, I've been out to this trail five times or so because the very first time I went out and decided that I was going to climb this mountain, I didn't have the mindset that day of, hey, I'm going to set out to climb this mountain and successfully climb it. It was kind of more of a, I'm going to go try this out and see how it works. And I didn't have enough water. I didn't have enough time. I don't even think I had the right kind of shoes on. So it has taken me tweaking, going back and again and again and learning more about the way that I climb. Each time I go back, a portion that was really difficult for me isn't as hard anymore because I've already done it. And I know what challenges are coming up because I've talked to other people on the trail. So there might be changes in the terrain where maybe it was easy to get a footing, but then it changes into a really like smooth rock where it's slippery, or sometimes there will even be a lot of gravel and it's just a little bit more challenging. But I know ahead of time where it is going to be challenging, but I also know where to rest. I know that right around the corner, a certain curve that I have to go around, there's a huge boulder to rest on with a gorgeous view where I can drink some water. I just have to keep climbing a few more of these steep steps to get there. And I know that coming down feels challenging too, just in a different way than going up. This trail gets very, very steep towards the top where you have to follow reflectors on the rocks to know where you are going and you have to climb on hands and knees because after a while, the trail just sort of disappears and the terrain that you're left with, it's just this big bunch of confusing rocks. I think that can feel like a quitting journey too sometimes, like if you start without a solid quit plan and you work really, really hard, but you don't make it because things get challenging and confusing. So your quitting journey, like this hike that I'm working on, is best done with an understanding of what you're doing, learning new skills, and practice, practice, practice. And because it's a journey, you've got to take the time to slow down and appreciate every attempt you make and feel proud of yourself for trying. Maybe you even promise yourself and the mountain that you'll be back in a few days. And then you show up to try again and again until you make it. What you're doing here is building neuroplasticity in your brain, where by doing something new, your brain has to adapt by changing and building new neurons and synapses to respond to the stimuli that you are giving it. Imagine an image of your brain lifting weights. This is a great way to think about neuroplasticity. When you learn new things, your brain sends messages from one neuron to another. If you do the same thing enough times, your brain eventually makes a connection or a neural pathway between neurons. This makes activities easier because your brain expects them and you can do them better and better. So you've probably been vaping for quite some time, right? Well, that means that your brain has these neural pathways built for vaping. It's easy to do and it's pretty much on autopilot. Plus, your brain has an addiction double whammy because nicotine physically creates nicotine receptors in your brain. And when they go without nicotine, they'll scream out at you in the form of urges and withdrawal. This is important because you need to understand your brain and how it pertains to addiction. That is one of our primary goals from part three of this series. And you need to know this because from the second you decide to quit vaping, you are going to be rewiring your brain by practicing neuroplasticity. So let's start practicing our two topics of empowerment and empowered action today with neuroplasticity in mind, okay? For topic number one, mantras are a great way to practice neuroplasticity when you are just getting started and need some guidance on how to feel empowered. So how do you feel empowered? Well, for starters, you have to tell yourself that you're powerful. You've been a slave to vaping for so long that it has stolen your power and it's time for you to get it back. Your work for today is to get out a pen and a piece of paper or take notes on your phone whenever it is safe to do so and write down these five amazing mantras that I'm going to give you, okay? Number one, I am building brain skills. Number two, I set a good example for kids. Number three, I am not a sucker to big tobacco. Number four, I am worthy of a vape-free life. And number five, I am in control over vaping. 
Good. Now I want you to write five more mantras of your own and use really powerful verbiage. You are strong, powerful, empowered, in control, wise, worthy, over vaping. You have control, power, authority, autonomy, agency, confidence. If you want to think of more, then think of how vaping has made you feel in the past in a bad way and then flip it around to a positive way. For example, if you felt weak, stupid, hopeless, mad, controlled, anxious, overwhelmed, etc., use strong words like we just mentioned and flip them. So add in beautiful, patient, healthy, smart, etc. What are you coming up with? The point here is to come up with something that makes you feel empowered. I want you to make these mantras the background on your phone, and I want you to put them on sticky notes in three very important places. Number one, wherever you will see them first place in the morning, so maybe next to your bed. Number two, wherever you will see them throughout the day, so possibly in your car. And number three, wherever you will see them right before you go to bed, so maybe that's on your bathroom mirror. And for a fun bonus challenge, start putting them in places where you feel triggered the most. This might be on your computer, in your car, around certain people, or wherever you'll be at a certain time of day. Now for topic number two, empowered action. Do you remember the last time you tried to quit vaping and gave in because you were white knuckling it? Well, that was action. So good job on that. But it was action that you took without a quit plan and that ultimately set you up for failure. So while again, I think your efforts are awesome. Don't get me wrong. This time, I want you to approach action from a place of empowerment and preparedness. And what that looks like is using all four of the episodes in this four-part series, plus the mantras we just talked about, to get yourself in a really amazing high-level headspace so that you can approach quitting from a place of confidence and authority instead of weakness and desperation. And for the preparedness part, I want you to make a list of everything you think you will need to be successful on your quitting journey. I will give you some specific examples of this work that I've done with clients so you can borrow some ideas, but a lot of what goes on your list is going to be very personal and unique to you, and it might not even be what you think at first. So let's get started. Break out that pen and piece of paper or take notes on your phone. Here are three essential things that you need to do in order to be prepared to quit. Number one, listen and do all of the homework from this four-part series. Number two, research how to make a quit plan. And number three, research how to make a relapse plan. I'm only listing these three simple things because a great quit plan and a great relapse plan will include all the essential details that you will need to quit for good this time after you are in a higher level headspace. And these things include understanding your urges, identifying your triggers, planning on how to manage urges and triggers, seeking out your support systems, creating a shopping list for a journal and for your crutches, clarifying goals and milestones, how to avoid self-sabotage, detailing your reward system, scheduling yourself to vape, and so much more. Quit plans and relapse plans are so crucial and fun to do that I could talk about this all day and easily let this episode segue into those topics, but I want to stay on track for today's theme of empowerment. So if you would like more information on quit plans and relapse plans, just send an email to hello at breakvapes.com. That's hello at breakvapes with an S.com. And someone from my team will get back to you with information. Okay, ladies, the last thing I want you to remember from today is that your quitting journey is your mountain to climb and everyone will get there at their own pace. But I want you all to show up self-aware, curious, with goals in mind, and feeling empowered. Showing up to a climb without water in the wrong shoes and in a bad mood is going to feel totally different than showing up feeling empowered and prepared to take action. Believe me, I have done it. So how are we feeling? Check in with yourself and know that you can do this. I believe in you. You are 100% worthy and 200% capable of living a vape-free life. I say it all of the time because I mean it. You guys are the best, and I am so grateful for each and every one of you listening to this podcast right now. You've got this, Mama. We are almost ready to wrap up for today, but before we go, there is one more action item that I would love for you to do, and that is to swipe over to Instagram and come say hi to me at Miss Quit Vaping. That's M-S dot Quit Vaping. See you on the inside. That's it for this episode. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in today. 
If you like what was offered in today's show and want even more support, head over to www.breakvapes.com and schedule your free strategy session to discover exactly how my proven system can help you ditch your vapes for good. Bye for now.